How do you give your images that vintage look? Welcome to Make With Me, I'm Matthew Encina, and yes, M-E are my initials. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to take your images and age them in Photoshop using a few simple techniques. Let's get into it. So I have my artwork here. This is just a stock photo that I grabbed from Shutterstock and I overlaid the type vintage using the typeface Futura. The first thing I want to do is add a paper texture. And the reason why I want to do that is normally with a lot of these old photos or old posters, uh, they were printed, they weren't digital. What I'm looking for is a texture like this one that I can composite on top of here. So I'm going to just drop this on top of the image. So I have this nice paper texture that's warm, has all these cool little imperfections and fibers in there. And I'm just going to name this paper texture. And I'm going to change the blend mode over here to multiply. So what this is doing is it's taking all of the dark values of the image of the paper texture and compositing that on top of all the artwork underneath. So now I have my initial uh, texture on top and it's already looking pretty good. And it's already halfway there, I think, with this paper texture. So the next thing I want to do is add some dust and dirt. So again, I'm going to go to my folder. And if you looked at any aged photographs, if you leave it out long enough, it will collect dust and dirt either on the film or on the, uh, the print itself. So what I'm looking for is another thing. Ah, this looks pretty cool. And this one looks right. So I'm just looking for something that has these cool little specks of dust and lint just to give it, again, more of that weathered look. And I'm going to rename this to Dust and Dirt. I'm actually going to invert it by pushing Command-I or Control-I. And this is going to reverse the values here. So now I want to have these dark little specks to be multiplied on top. So I'm going to go to the blend mode here again go to multiply and it already gives all this dust and dirt on there. But I think it's a little strong, so I'm going to bring it down. So I'm gonna push Command M or Control M if you're on PC. And what I wanna do is I wanna lift the dark values so they start to disappear. So if I just make a point here and I start to pull this up, you can see what that's doing to that dust and dirt layer. If I bring it down, it's gonna do the reverse and bring more dirt on top. So I feel like this is pretty good. So you can see this before and after. I still think it's a little strong in certain areas, specifically over her face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mask, layer mask right here. I'm going to push B for brush, and I'm going to make sure I have a black value. And I'm just going to paint out a few areas on her face where I don't want the dust to appear. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to push Shift 1 to change the flow of the brush to 10%. So it's really light, and I could take my time and be pretty subtle with this. So as you can see, I'm slowly erasing some of the dust and dirt on her face because I want her face to pop out and I don't really want it to be affected by all the dirt. And then same with her shirt here and her chin. So I'm just painting out a few of these areas because I think it looks a little bit better. So I'm pretty happy with that. And that is the dust and dirt. Okay, the next thing I want to do is add scratches to this image. So if you leave a photo or print out long enough and you let it get banged up in your closet or in a box, it tends to get scratches. So what I'm looking for is another texture layer to add scratches. And I found this one on Shutterstock that I really like because it has these cool creases here and all of these white little nicks. So I'm going to grab this, drop this on top, and then I'm going to push enter and I'm going to name this scratches. And then I'm going to go to the uh, blend mode and instead of multiply, I'm going to go screen. So screen is the opposite of multiply. Screen takes the light values of an image and then composites it on top of everything below it. Took all those white scratches and folds and it's compositing it on top. And this looks pretty cool. I, I like it, but uh, just like the dust and dirt, I feel like it's a little strong for me. I don't like how faded it looks in some of these areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push Command M, adjust the curves again, and I'm just gonna bring this down. So I'm gonna bring down the white levels a little bit and you can see it's starting to preserve some of the white specks that I have. There we go. So the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of aging. So if you leave your prints out long enough and you leave it in the sun, the edges tend to fade. The color uh, tends to desaturate a little bit or get warped and changed. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And you'll see what I'm about to do in a minute. But I'm going to push B for brush. 
and I'm going to select two different uh, colors here. First, I'm going to go to a warm value here that's bright, a little bit more on the orange side to replicate like a, a bright sun. And I'm just going to paint that over this edge right here. And then I'm going to take the opposite, a cool color, a complementary color that's a little bit darker, maybe more in the mid values around here. And I'm going to paint this area here. And again, I'm just trying to emulate what happens when you leave a photo out in the sun for too long. The colors change and fade. So I'm going to go over to my blend mode, but instead of changing it to multiply or screen, I'm going to change it to soft light. And I use this blend mode to add contrast to my images. And what it does is it takes values that are 50% and brighter and then lightens the image. And then it takes values that are 50% and darker and darkens those. So you can see the difference of that before and after. So I'm going to just turn that down just a touch because I think it's a little strong. I feel like I faded her face a little too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dark orange, something like this. Let me play with this. Let me see what happens. And if I paint this on her face, yeah, there we go. So what it's doing is it's adding a little bit of contrast just to her face. So if we turn off the blend mode, you can see I'm just adding a little bit of darkness right here. And again, it's multiplying that on top, which is giving it contrast. So if I go back to soft light, you can see what that looks like before and after. Now I feel pretty good about that. I, I like that a lot. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to color grade the photo a little bit. And if you ever look at any old vintage photos or prints, sometimes the dark areas of a photo seem to be a little bit warmer. And then the white areas, either they tint a little bit cooler or they tint a little bit warmer. At any rate, I just want to play with a little color grading where I'm stylizing the color of this photo. So I'm going to create a new curves here. I'm going to call this color grade and then I'm going to go to the reds here. So I'm going to take the dark values of the reds and see what happens if I just were to lift that up. So you can see in the dark values of the red there, I don't like what it's doing in the all the medium and bright values. So I'm going to bring that back down just a touch. So I'm just right now I'm just adjusting the darks adding a little bit more red to that. And I want that to look a little bit more brown. So I'm going to add a little bit of green to that as well. So now you can see it's a, those blacks are a little bit more brown there. If I pull this back a little bit, you can see I'm adding a little bit of a green tint into the highlights. Now if I go to the blue, let me try the same thing here. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the highlights, not too much, but I'm going to bring it down elsewhere. So it has a little bit more of a yellow tint. So let's see that off and then on. So you can see I added a little bit of a brown tint to the dark values and I gave a little bit of uh, this greenish blue wash on the highlights. So I'm feeling pretty good. You can see what this looks like before and after. And I'm just going to take all of my layers that I added. I'm going to put them in a folder and call them FX just so we could see quickly before and after feels pretty good so far. The next thing I want to do is add some soft edges to my artwork here. And if you ever look at old photos, they tend to get very soft around the edges of the lens or the frame. So I want to emulate that a bit. So I'm going to take my artwork and I'm going to convert that into a smart layer. So convert for smart filters. Now that it's a smart layer, I'm going to go to filter, blur gallery and iris blur just so that I can mimic the blur around the edges. And you can see what it's doing here to the letters E and V, which is pretty cool. I think that's a little strong for my taste. So I'm going to open this up. Just have it barely on the edge. I like that look. Let me press OK. OK, it looks pretty cool. I feel pretty close to done here. What I want to do is I want to add a little bit of grain to this photo. The photo looks super clean because it's a beautifully shot stock photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer and I call it grain. And I'm just going to fill this with 50% gray essentially. And then I'm going to go to filter, noise, add noise. So I have this cool noise right here. I'm just setting it to Gaussian, then monochromatic. I'm going to put okay. 
and then we're going to go to my grain and I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. And if we look very closely, that has such a great effect on it. See that? This is before and then after. Now it kind of looks like this was printed inside of a book and it has that natural grain that would come from a high resolution print. And that's pretty much it. Of course, this is a great way to give your images that aged vintage look, but also practice restraint. It's very easy to go overboard in doing this stuff. It's easy to make your images look too muddy or too dirty. And I tend to do that from time to time because it's so much fun adding all this texture. Uh, but use restraint and only use it where it's appropriate. Hopefully that was helpful so you can see where we started. And then after our effects, this is what it looks like. That's the end of our tutorial. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, let us know by hitting the subscribe button and then leaving us a comment on what you'd like me to cover next. If you want to learn my entire image making process from concept, research, to design and presentation, check out my course on style frames where I teach you photo manipulation and how to tell stories with single images. That's it for me. I'll see you in the future.